Okay, so this evening we're gonna paint this uh, scene over here. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my brush. This is part of the Pryor Mountains on the Crow Reservation. I was here, I think about three years ago, and I painted this scene. Exact same thing I'm gonna try now, but I made a major mistake back then. I um, was wearing a bright green t-shirt. And the sun was bouncing off my shirt onto my canvas created a real problem. So I painted the, all this lovely green ambient light. I'm being facetious there. Did not work out well. My name is Jason Lee Taco. And I thank you for uh, watching my video here. If this is your first time do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Keep the YouTube algorithms happy. And what I do is I show these, the first uh, 20 minutes, half hour, whatever, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more, to the YouTube public. And then the rest is reserved for my Patreon subscribers, if you want to become a Patreon subscriber, click on the link below, $5 a month. You can watch my videos. I'm going to be doing at least a couple videos a month. Unless I get another COVID <laughs> illness that lays me up for a while like it did last winter. And you'll be able to watch my videos uninterrupted, no ads, all that stuff. So leave your questions and comments below and thank you for watching so this range if you saw in the beginning th this is a heck of a lot longer before it gets to this um, closer foothill here I'm not gonna paint it that way <clears throat> just because I think we can do it a little more interesting I'm gonna rearrange the uh, the scene a little bit so let's get in our darkest dark by the way the colors on my palette titanium white cadmium I'm sorry that's nickel yellow cadmium yellow light cadmium orange yellow ochre transparent red oxide cadmium red um, alizarin crimson ultramarine blue cobalt blue cerulean blue viridian sap green and gamblin's portland gray warm which I usually don't use in the studio, but I do use it when I'm out in the field painting. So let's block in our most obvious value, our darkest dark. This tree also was moved over. Gonna grab a bit of Gamlin's Portland Gray Warm. I like that color for doing a quick pushback. In other words, pushing things back in the distance. Now I've done a studio version of this painting too after I, from my field study, but it's when I pulled out the field study and I noticed just how off some of the colors were. And actually, when I was out here painting three years ago, I realized at one point that I was having that problem with the ambient light. So I tried to tip my canvas and palette up, but it only did so much. So it happens, but... I happen to be in the area. 
thought, let's get him, let's take another shot at it, because I did really like the scene. And I think it could make a nice painting. One thing I did not do three years ago was block in my foreground colors first, my obvious colors. So I really struggled with the uh, tones back in here. Sounds like they're getting ready for the 4th of July. You're probably watching this video months later. But um, at the time of this recording, it's getting close to the 4th of July. It's actually June 30th. Sun is getting low in the sky. Looks like I need to replenish my cadmium yellow again, cadmium yellow light. The strongest greens in the foreground, their strongest yellows, I should say. That, of course, follows that lovely rule of aerial perspective. Let's get in some of these more ochre tones of this grass. A little lighter, maybe. Let's see. It's not bad, gives us something to start with. I'm going to go with this nickel yellow, which is a very pale yellow. It's nice for, for more distant things to have some yellow in them. Oh, I actually think I hear some sandhill cranes. That's neat. When I was coming through here, through Minnesota to Montana, there were sandhill cranes in Minnesota. Didn't realize they were out this far west. I'm not sure. I don't know who your mom is. Oh, I haven't seen her, but I just got here. What are you doing? Doing a painting. Ask me if I knew where his mom was. I have no idea where his mom is. Okay, I think what I'm going to do... is... Rock in this whole hill in approximate shadow tone. And then I'll put in some of the highlights over this. So I'm going pretty thin. I want to cover the canvas. I'm using a fairly textured canvas here. What's that? Are all the cars in the back? Yeah, they might be. I don't know. I just got here, so I'm not sure. Uh -huh. Hopefully he finds his mom, okay?
Okay, so we got that shadow area blocked in. Let's go with an approximate of these more distant hills back here. Now these distant hills are tricky. They were last time for me. I'm going to do some, some of this nickel yellow and Gamlin's Portland Gray Warm. And a touch of Viridian. Let's compare that tone to what's out there. Not bad, maybe a touch cooler. So let's go with a little more Viridian. Guys, this is lighter than this for the most part. Let's bring that down there and close up that white. Okay, so now this background area, these background hills, I think I'm going to do the same thing I did with here. I'm going to make an approximate shadow tone. Now back there, this is lighter and cooler than that. And where I where I'm going to key it in is right here. Too dark. I think that's pretty good. So let's thin that with a bit of mineral spirits. And go in very thin. Now maybe that I need to darken that, we'll see. But I'll, I also can start keying in the shadow color off of off of this uh, these middle ground hills. Just want to let you know too. I teach live online painting classes through Zoom. I have some videos on my channel that shows excerpts from those classes they're very in-depth some of the most in-depth instruction you're going to find i try to make it as absolutely clear and concise as possible so if you're interested in that check out the videos there's links below on where you can sign up for that Okay, so let's let's block in the sky color. I'm now starting to remember. It's funny how you do this. When you paint the same scene again years later, you kind of remember all the problems you had the first time, and I'm starting to remember those. And keying in this hill back here was the biggest challenge for me. And I think it's going to be the biggest challenge this time. But I got a few more years under my belt, so let's hope and pray that those few years have served me well.
when you're uncertain about values and what your values should be, at least when I am, I try to get an approximate key in of everything and then go back in and make adjustments to values or colors. It's really hard to gauge uh, an ambiguous value on its own. You gotta get everything else blocked in there. Once you get all the relationships in, then it's a little easier to see what's off, what needs to be done. Sorry, I know my thing's shaking a whole lot. All right, as we get down toward the horizon, actually gonna get a little more ochre in here. That's a little too much. As it gets a little greener in the sky down here. Okay, with all that blocked in, as I squint at it, this I think needs to go darker, and so does that. So we're gonna proceed to do that. I'm gonna start right at the top there. Same colors as before, just doing some ultramarine, alizarin and white, maybe a touch of cobalt. And see, sometimes what happens is at the top of these buttes, right where it meets the lighter area, it can be the darkest part of them. Almost see a hint of meridian as we go down here. Okay, so now I can go a little darker back there. Okay, so I'm gonna switch this to Patreon members. Uh, thank you for watching up to this point. If you wanna see the rest of this video, um, become a Patreon supporter, five bucks a month. Click on the link below. Putting up a couple videos a month. Uh, no commercials, full commentary. Some videos I comment on more than others, depending on how much of a struggle I'm having. But anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a like and leave a comment, question below, and we'll see you again.